Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today I'll be showing you how to set up your very own virtual machine using a free open source software called VirtualBox. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to go to uh, virtualbox.org or file hippo and download their latest version which is 4.3.20.96996 and uh, once you have it and uh, install it you'll see something like this so a very simplistic user interface and what you need to do here is click on new so now you get to choose the name of your virtual machine now let's name it something so I'm just going to call it lab rat because I do all my tests on it then you can select which kind of operating system you want to install. If it's a Linux virtual machine, make sure you're selecting Linux over here. But I'll be doing it for Windows, so Microsoft Windows. Then the operating system that you plan to install. I'll be installing Windows 8.1. Then you get to select what memory your virtual machine is going to have. Now this depends on your host memory configuration and also basically how much memory you would need. Now for most purposes I would recommend setting this at around 2048 or 3096 because um, that seems to be like the sweet spot for most people. Now keep in mind if you set this way too high what's going to happen is your virtual machine is going to use a lot of memory and that might cause issues on your host machine because the software needs to run on your host machine right and if, you, if your host machine is running out of memory you might experience data loss even virtual box may crash if you allocate this way too high so basically what you should do is find a nice balance between performance on your host machine and performance on your virtual box machine so if you've got like 16 gigs of RAM you can go for around 4 gigs, 5 gigs, maybe even 6 but I wouldn't recommend pushing it too far now I've just got 8 gigs of RAM so I'm going to just select 3096 over here and we're going to proceed the next important thing is to create your virtual hard drive now while creating your virtual hard drive, there are basically several different formats. You can select either VirtualBox Disk Image if you want to use it with VMware or with other software in the future. You should go ahead and select VMDK, Virtual Machine Disk. You can even create a Parallels Disk for Mac users if you're going to ever use Parallels. But I'm just going to select VDI because um, I only ever use VirtualBox. Now there are two kinds of storage. Um, what you can have it to be fixed or dynamically allocated. Now if you have fixed storage, what happens is that you get a single file and that file is basically the size of your hard drive and uh, it stays that way all the time. So let's say you have nothing on your virtual machine, it's just empty, but it's still going to take up the 20 gigs or 30 gigs that you've allocated to it. But if you select dynamically allocated, what's going to happen is it's going to take up space based on how much you actually put in your virtual machine. So this is way better for people who um, don't have a lot of hard drive space and also don't use a lot of hard drive space, which is going to be my case. So I'm going to select dynamically allocated. Keep in mind uh, that uh, fixed size is not recommended by me because uh, right now if you just go for fixed size and you select let's say 30 gigabytes even if you don't use it it's still going to take up 30 gigabytes on your hard drive but anyway if you've got plenty of hard drive space and you just want it to be you know nice stable one a hard drive file and you want it to be there all the time then you can go for fixed size but I'll be going for dynamically allocated so now we get to select our hard drive size so I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, well, 25 gigabytes, but we'll make it 20 for us. And now we just hit create. And there you go. We've got our very own virtual machine. But now what I'm going to do is I'll go into settings and 
choose exactly what kind of virtual machine I want. So as you can see, uh, we've got our name here, our operating system, and version. Under the advanced tab, now here's something really nice. We've got shared clipboard and drag and drop. What these things do is if you select shared clipboard and drag and drop, you can basically, let's say you copy a link on your host machine. You can just directly go and paste it on your virtual machine. Now for that to happen, you either have to set it to host to guest or bidirectional. Now if you're going to do the same thing from your guest to host, which means let's say you find a link on your virtual machine or any text on your virtual machine and you want to paste it on the host machine's um, software or whatever, um, then you need it to be from guest to host. But I do both of these all the time, so I'm going to select bi-directional, which means the clipboard is basically shared. So whatever you copy gets copied in the host machine as well. Now, drag and drop till now, the functionality is very limited in uh, Windows 8. But anyway, I'll just keep it bi-directional. Then we'll go to System, and as you can see, we've set our memory at 3096. Nothing else to change here, but here we go. This is our processor configuration. So right now, this is just using one of my four CPUs. So the processor I'm using on this system is a Core i5, which is not that fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just allocate two cores of my i5 to the virtual machine. And this is your execution cap. Now what this thing does is, let's say you run a very demanding program on your virtual machine. That might take up a lot of CPU. So if you set it to 100%, it can completely use your CPU. But if you want it to be, let's say, like 80%, then what's going to happen is the max CPU usage on your virtual machine is going to be locked at this. So basically the 100% of CPU usage on your virtual machine would be actually 80% of your CPU. So in slower computers, this would be very helpful. Also in situations where you're, you're running really demanding applications on your virtual machine, and you don't want your host machine to face problems. But I'm just going to leave it at 100%. Malware always needs a lot of CPU. Now this is your hardware virtualization. Make sure you have these checked. Now depending on what computer you're using, you may even have to go into your BIOS and enable hardware virtualization. Now that's a fairly simple step, so I'm not going to show you that. It depends on your computer. Many computers have it turned on by default, some don't, so if you don't have it, just go ahead, go into your BIOS and check in there. You'll see a setting for hardware virtualization, you just have to turn it on. Now we get to video memory and monitor count. Now at the moment I'll just be using one monitor, so nothing to play around with here, but as you can see you can enable 3D and 2D video acceleration on your virtual machine. So I'm basically going to max out the video memory. Just because I have plenty of it and uh, I don't want my virtual machine to suffer due to lack of video memory. Especially with Windows Aero and stuff like that. Now let's get to storage. As you can see we have already got our hard drive selected. That is because uh, we've already made it and configured it. If you haven't you'll have to manually add one at any time and you can just do it over here it's not a difficult thing to do you can just go ahead and add your own hard drive anytime if you didn't set it up in the first place audio is enabled now network there are different kinds of network if you select NAT it's going to be kind of like a direct network between your host and your guest and they're both going to act like just one system but if you select bridge then uh, you can have a different version of your adapter so you'll be basically having two different connections on your machine but uh, you know if you if you just want to be safe and you just want immediate internet connectivity the easiest to configure is NAT now you can enable USB controller if you need it and you can always add shared folders 
Now, in VirtualBox, drag and drop is not supported at the moment for Windows to Windows operating systems. But what you can do is uh, to share files or to get access to your host machine, you can create shared folders. So these things basically you just select a folder and that folder becomes av available on your virtual machine. Now a lot of people ask me questions about how I communicate with my host machine and that is using shared folders. Now a concern here is let's say I have some malware on my virtual machine. What if that malware gets transmitted into my host machine through the shared folders? Now I'm going to tell you how to create a shared folder and how to avoid that scenario. So we go ahead and hit um, create shared folder and now we get to select the path. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into my F drive and I'll select tools as my shared folder. So now when I go into my virtual machine tools is going to be there as a separate drive. Now you can even change the folder name if you like and this is where you can do some neat things. Now I, I always check read only and auto mount. Now what this does is once you select both of these your shared folder is going to be a read only drive which means you can access files from, the, from it in the virtual machine but you cannot write files to it from your virtual machine which means if any kind of malware tries to write into uh, the hard drive it's not going to be able to do that. It can only write to your virtual machine hard disk and not to your own host machine virtual machine shared hard disk. So if you're planning to do malware testing or anything like that, I highly recommend you make your shared folders read only so that there is only one way access and there's no chance of being screwed up by malware. So this should be fairly simple. Once you set it up, you should see this folder when you boot into your virtual machine. So there we go. We've completed configuring LabRat, and you can complete configuring any virtual machine you want. And once you're all set, you can go ahead and click Start. And then basically, all you have to do is um, you have to um, install your operating system. And once you do that, you're good to go completely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please uh, like the video. Stay informed, stay secure.